Hello, chemistry students. Today we will be performing the relative stabilities of complex ions experiment. In this experiment, we will examine whether the precipitates or complex ions formed by the reaction of hydrated copper two ion with a given species can, on addition of a second ligand, be dissolved or transformed to another species. We will then rank the relative stabilities of the precipitates and complex ions made from copper two ion with respect to one another and thus rank the equilibrium formation constants for each species in order of increasing magnitude. Once we have completed ranking the known species, we will then test an unknown species and incorporate it into the ranked list. Let's get started. We will begin by adding one milliliter of 0.1 molar copper two nitrate solution to the first six wells of the top row of our well plate configuration. We will next add one milliliter of one molar solutions containing the species listed at the top of each column. We will mix the reagents in each well and the contents of the top row of wells will serve as a reference during the rest of the experiment. For now, we will omit the sulfide ion and come back to it later. To establish the relative stabilities of the seven species, we need to mix them with each of the other species in a systematic way. We will first test them against ammonia. In the second row of wells, we will make the same mixtures as we did in the first row. Then we will add one milliliter of one molar ammonia to the second through sixth wells of row two. We don't need to test ammonia with ammonia. We will mix the reagents and note any changes that occur upon the addition of ammonia. Changes that occur indicate a reaction to form a more stable species. Use the reference wells in the top row for comparison. We will next perform stability tests for chloride ion using the wells in the third row of the plate configuration. We will start with the third well because we already know how chloride and ammonia stack up from the previous set of tests. The other wells should be prepared in the same way as the corresponding wells in the first row. We will next add one milliliter of one molar chloride ion mix and note any changes that occur. We will next perform stability tests for hydroxide ion using the wells in the fourth row. We will next perform stability tests for oxalate ion using the wells in the fifth row.
We will next perform stability tests for the phosphate ion using the wells in the sixth row. We will next perform stability tests for the nitrite and sulfide ions using the wells in the seventh column. In the seventh column of wells, we will make the same mixtures as we did in the first row. However, well one of column seven will only contain copper nitrate and sulfide ion as a reference. We will then perform stability tests for the sulfide ion using the wells in column seven. You should now be able to rank the relative stabilities of the seven copper two species. We will next test the relative stability of an unknown species. We have been given unknown number two. We will begin by adding one milliliter of 0.1 molar copper two nitrate solution and one milliliter of unknown number two to a test tube. We will now add one milliliter of each of the previously ranked ligands in the appropriate order to the test tube with unknown number two and record the result after each addition. You will need to incorporate the unknown species into the ranked list of ligands. Okay, students, you should now be able to rank the relative stabilities of all of the complex ions and precipitates and place the unknown ligand in the appropriate position of that ranking. This concludes the relative stabilities of complex ions experiment. Thank you for joining me for this laboratory.